Well, hello there. It's good to see you. It's good to see you. All right, how many Toms can you name? Now there's Tom Brady the Goat, Tom Holland the Spider-Man, Thomas the Tank Engine, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, uh, Tom Shoes the Shoe Guy, Tom Jones the Singer, Tom Clancy the Author, Tom Cruise the Actor, Tom Selleck with the Mustache, Tom Hanks from That Thing You Do, or The Burbs if you prefer that movie, uh, Tommy Boy, who went to college like a lot of people did for seven years. You keep going, and I bet you will finally get to the Bible Thomas, Doubting Thomas, Thomas the Doubter. Now, that's not probably what he was hoping to be named for all time. And to be fair, who of us doesn't doubt from time to time? I mean, can you imagine the one time you doubt and you're labeled the doubter for the rest of eternity? I mean, just a few chapters earlier, he was the one that said, let's go to Jerusalem to die with Jesus. He's not called Thomas the Brave. He's Doubting Thomas. And after the crucifixion, the other disciples, they were all gathered behind locked doors, but not Thomas. We don't know if he thought the adventure of following Jesus was over, if he was so filled with grief that he wanted to be alone. Whatever the reason, he wasn't there. And he missed a lot by not being there. Jesus came right through the locked doors, greeted the disciples in peace, showed them the wounds, breathed the Spirit on them, and then sent them out again. And the disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord alive, because now they knew the adventure of following Jesus was going to continue. There was no need for grief, no need to doubt. Thomas? Thomas missed all of that. And that's the danger of not being there. Maybe you can relate to missing out, missing out on some opportunities. This year has been the first time I've read this story and thought, did not being there, did, did missing out cause the doubt? Was it more than just the craziness of a resurrected Jesus, but the not being there that added more to Thomas's doubt? Because it's hard not being there. It's hard to feel a part of something if you're not there. And we've all felt that. My daughter didn't get to be there when her sister was born and had to wait three days to see her. I got relatives who still haven't held my new baby. Yeah, we got things we've missed out on. I mean, how often do we wish for just either some sort of sign in this, right? Some clear-cut evidence that would help us know that God is with us, that the desire to know that this is really part of his plan, that he is working good, even though we're missing out. That's the Thomas in us. The no, no, until I know, till I have touched, till I have seen, till it's all back to normal, then, then it'll be okay. But this is the tension that we live in, to believe without sight to believe without being face-to-face, -to, -face, to believe without touch. Now we know what happens with Thomas. Jesus comes to him gently and says, touch here, stop doubting and believe. Jesus wasn't hard on Thomas for his doubts because despite his skepticism, Thomas was still loyal. Yeah, he doubted, but he was still there, wasn't he? I mean, some people need to doubt before they can believe. You may not be sure about what's going on right now, not feeling confident. You're not alone in that. It's okay to doubt and it's okay to be afraid. It's when doubt becomes stubbornness and refusal that doubt harms our faith. It's when you turn away and give up that to the fear. That's what harms faith. When you're afraid, when you doubt, don't stop there. Let your doubt deepen your faith as you search for the answer and be confident that Jesus, the Lord himself, will meet you. Jesus came to Thomas and he comes to us. Not in the same way for sure, but, but maybe through a friend, definitely through his word, through baptism, through communion, through a conversation, maybe going out and looking in nature. I bet you could list all the way that God comes to you and it would be way more than Tom's that you could name. Jesus comes to you, not to argue you out of your doubt, but as the living presence to love you as a healer that forgives your doubts and by his spirit rekindles and strengthens your faith. So remember, we don't miss out on Jesus because he comes to us. And if there are those who are missing out right now, let's go to them and share our faith with them. Faith that says, when we're taken off guard, the Lord remains constant and is standing with us. Faith that says that even when we don't know what is going to happen, God remains in control. And faith that says, thanks be to God that there is far more going on around us than just what we can see.